Lord, we thank you for a good night's rest on this rainy day, Lord. We know there's a lot of rain out there. There may be some folks still coming in, Lord, running a little bit late. Pray for safety on the roads, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord, for those who have come out, though, Lord, on this sort of a cold, drizzly day. We thank you that we can gather together for this marriage and family conference. Thank you, Lord, for those that are uh, taking care of the nursery and the young people, Lord, that allow parents to be able to be part of this. Lord, I pray you give them a good morning and afternoon working with the boys and girls. Have a good spirit there. Thank you for those that are part of the security, Lord, just watching the doors, making sure we're safe here. Thank you for those men in the sound booth that we can be recorded for folks to watch later. Lord, just thank you for each one that's here. The men, the women, those that may be married, those that have children, those that may not. Lord, that we can learn Bible principles about what it is in the area of manhood, being a dad, a husband, family later on today. Just ask your blessing, Lord. May we just be ready to soak things in. May we be ready to obey, Lord, as you work in our hearts from the Bible. And I pray you'll give special wisdom and strength to Mrs. Griffith upstairs with the ladies, Dr. Griffith both now and then in the afternoon sessions, Lord. Keep them fresh and strong. Anoint them with your spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning. I know my wife will not be long. People say, uh, you know, does your wife speak? Meaning what? formal presentations and I usually say well she talks but she's not a speaker there's a difference isn't it so I don't know how she'll do up there you know she always gets she does it but she gets nervous and intense so I've been praying a lot for her and trust the Lord will bless her I always say to her honey you have a message to give you know as uh, we suggested last night you know mom of five grandmother of 18 and 18 great grandchildren and putting up with me for almost 59 years she's, she's got a story to tell and in the ministry all those years and i've uh, dragged her all over the the country over these last 30 years so it's it's been an interesting experience but she's faithful and steady i'm, I'm grateful grateful for her i'm uh, glad to be here for this session you know the ladies i really believe have the <coughs> toughest role they really do they have to live under our leadership and uh, that's not an easy thing you know, they are called upon to submit to the husband. And uh, that's that's a challenge. And they should take care of that on day one. You know, like the, when they go down that aisle, that should all be resolved. It often is not, but it's still a, a real challenge for them. But you and I can make that challenge easier, you know, as husbands. If we'll be the men that we ought to be. And uh, the problem in, in homes and family situations today is... Us, you know, men are the problem. That's why we have a men's conference every year. Grateful for you guys who come. The rest of you are welcome to come in next November. But the problem is men. And if men would get hold of what it means to be a man of God, to be the, the husband that he ought to be, be the dad that he ought to be, if God gives him that privilege, then that would make things a, a whole lot easier. And so uh, that's why we have this separated session. Appreciate Pastor setting it up that way because we can just be together talk. I'll invite your uh, conversation, questions, challenges, whatever you might have on your mind as we go along. But I've got some things that I want to present, and I'm going to trust the Lord to give us a, a good time together, good time for this weekend. So we have prayed, but I'd like to pray specifically about uh, this time. So pray with me. Our Father, we are grateful that we can be together as men uh, each one of us different, different from each other. Our circumstances are different. But we thank you, Lord, that your word is the same for all of us. And its message is timeless. And we ask you to use your word in this hour and in the hours that are ahead of us today and tomorrow. And move in our hearts to help each one of us be the man that you want us to be and that our families need us to be. So we'd be very, very grateful. We commit our time to you. And I do pray for Tricia and for the ladies and ask you to give them a sweet time together as well. Thank you for these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have some handouts that I'm going to give you. And uh, I want to be the school teacher. Remember the school teacher? And I'm going to hand these out. So I don't want you going through them. You know, turn them over on your desk until I'm ready to talk. So, uh, so that's kind of what I'm saying to you at, at the moment. But I'm going to hand these out to you. And, and I've titled it 
How many of you are, anybody here not married? Okay, a couple not married. All right, so uh, I've titled it this with, yet. <laughs> Better yet. <laughs> I've titled this, Hey You, Take Care of That Girl. That's our challenge. So, uh, And what we're going to talk about when we get into it, the, the second couple of pages, even though I'm asking you not to go jumping ahead right now, but we're going to talk about 50, 50 practical ways to love and minister to your wife. That's what we're going to talk about. Obviously, we don't have a lot of time for each one, right? But that's where we're going. So uh, let's get these out. But before you open them up, there's a couple of verses on the front. And uh, Pastor, can help me? Brother, help me. Thank you. I got some more here. I think I brought 30 or something. So we should be, or maybe 25, but we should be okay. How are we doing? Let me send some back here. Double need, brother. I guess. I don't know. Huh? <coughs> we have enough? We all right? Everybody got one? Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now, even though you have the verse in the front, if you have your Bible, I want you to open it. My wife and I were talking, you know, it's, it's okay when, you know, verses are up on screens and presentations and preaching and whatever, but it's good to open the book, right? Open it up and, and look at it. So <clears throat> I want you to go to Colossians chapter 3. And the tenth verse. And I'm going to read it. You will see it. And then I want maybe your thoughts, not I'll be giving you mine, but why did Paul feel the need to write this verse? So look what it says. Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Isn't that an interesting verse? I find that very interesting. Like, well, why did you, why'd you say that? What do you think? There's an issue in Colossia. A specific issue in, in Colossae, is that what you're saying? I don't know. I never found that. Maybe it was. Might have been. I don't know what that means. We're trouble with the women or trouble with the men. I'm probably, maybe. It's easy to think she's not doing all the stuff that I'm doing, and, and therefore she's not contributing, even though know, we forget. All the ways that he is contributing, but you get resentful or bitter. Okay. Anybody else? No personal testimonies needed. Just kind of throw she's, some thoughts out. be home with the kids while we're not a lot of times. But trying to make sure that bills are getting paid. They're home with the kids and we see things that a lot of times we don't. Okay. Be an example to your sons. Be an example to your sons. Good. Be easy to say, you know, why doesn't she think like me? Why doesn't she act like me? Why doesn't she have the strength? Come on, you should be able to. Yeah, good. When a husband comes home from work and he has a hard day at work, he picks up his wife and that's not the right thing to do because your wife honors you and respects you, so you need to honor her and respect her. <coughs> good. Sometimes you can almost wonder why it doesn't say, wife, love your husband and be not bitter against him. Right? But that's not what it said. Hey. Well, we're, as husbands, we're often away from home. And she's home with the kids. And uh, I found that she has often 
opportunities throughout the day. It's like, oh, Dave could help me out with this when he gets home. <coughs> the list grows throughout the day. <laughs> and we come home. I came home. And uh, often, you know, I had other plans uh, for the evening. And uh, so she would feel the immediacy of her needs being put off as I'm thinking that uh, my priorities were more important. Good, good. Well, I'll tell you one thing, we're all learning something here in this discussion to think about. <laughs> it's good, good. All right, well, bitterness. Uh, I really believe, as I study Scripture, bitterness is rooted in pride. Uh, pride in us. And men, everybody has a pride problem, but I want to tell you, men have a far greater pride problem than the ladies do. I think men really <coughs> struggle with pride. And uh, they struggle with, uh, we'll see some more of this, but they struggle with uh, being self-centered. And uh, we have our plan, right? That here's what I intend to do. Here's what I want to do. And, and I think we all marvel at how often that plan gets changed by the lady who uh, has other ideas, right? Other priorities. But uh, the warning, I think, is this. Be careful of your pride because in that pride, bitterness can be produced, obviously by that, that gal, her actions, her words, or whatever. And so that tells me that there is a proneness to bitterness in men. And we, we should be alert to that. Any of these back there, any extras of these back there? If not, we'll send these back. There you go. Now the verse begins with a very positive challenge, and we're going to pick that up again in the Ephesians 5 passage. But the challenge for the man, before he's warned about his bitterness, is to love her, to love your wife. And as you may know, Pastor, did you lose yours again? As you may know, this term love is uh, the term agape, which speaks of a self-sacrificing love. It's the love of John 3.16. There's different words for love in, in the original language, but this, this agape love is the idea of placing value on someone or something, and the value that you place on it <coughs> will be demonstrated by the sacrifice you make for it, okay? Um, John 3, 16, again, perfect example. God so loved the world, he placed value on the world. And the value he placed on the world caused him to then sacrifice to demonstrate how valuable the world was to him. And so what was the sacrifice? He gave. He gave his only begotten son. Now that's an incredible demonstration of this agape love. And in agape love, while there's other terms that are related to affection and emotion, agape is not a term that has to do with affection and emotion. So it is not, okay, you know, you guys, you need to love her. Well, you do need to love her with affection and emotion and those kinds of things. But the heart of love that God calls us to have is a love that says to her, I place value on you. And I'm going to sacrifice to show you how valuable you are to me. Now, I want to tell you, men, if you and I can get hold of that, then we'll be on our way to a, to a great marriage. So the challenge is love her, love your wife, and then be on guard because, I would suggest, because we are prone to bitterness. We have a self-centered we have a, a pride problem that can easily be set off. And we have ladies 
<laughs> who can say things that can set us off or do things or have expectations for us or they can nag us or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden, we're really put on the spot. Am I willing to sacrifice for her? That's the challenge. Don't be bitter against her. Uh, you took her from the hand of God, maybe from the hand of her daddy, that's typical, but you took her, you received her, and with that came tremendous responsibility. <laughs> and, and that's our, our job. Our job is to, to pour our life into this lady and to meet her needs. And the challenge for her and we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll rehearse some of this tomorrow in our, our morning message. But think about the challenge for her to submit herself to this man, to you, to me. That's not an easy thing to do. And that's a, that's a great challenge, and that's the great challenge that God has for the lady. You submit yourself to this man. That's not easy. It's not easy if you and I don't care about her, if you and I don't value her, if you and I don't meet her needs, and she's supposed to be under our headship. And so our challenge is this. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for her to be under my leadership because I'm going to take care of her. Husbands, love your wives. Be not bitter against them. Now, Ephesians... You turn there, if you will. And again, we're going to focus on the Ephesians passage tomorrow, but I just want to rehearse it for a moment. After the woman is told to submit herself to her husband. Morning. Thank you. Then comes the challenge to the man. And so in verse 25, same challenge. Husbands, love your wives. And I'm not going to get into the, to the depths of this for the moment. Uh, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself, there's the giving, there's the sacrifice, gave himself for it. And then the purpose of, the ongoing purpose of Christ in our life and the ongoing purpose of us ministering to our wife is portrayed in verses 26 and 27, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, the church, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And then he goes on and says, so what men to love their wives? In the same way, the man is supposed to love his wife. And so for the moment, for our purposes just in this session, here's my question to you. Is your wife thriving under your leadership? Is she doing well physically? Is she doing well emotionally? Is she doing well spiritually? Is she thriving because you have been ministering to her? And that's what a lot of marriage is. That's what Christ does. He doesn't save us and say, you know, I'm glad you belong to me. Take care. No. Hallelujah. It is an ongoing ministry to us. Well, you and I need to think of ourselves as ministering to our wife. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be the spiritual head. And I'm going to minister to her. I'm going to help her become everything that she can be for God. I want her to be a great wife. I want her to be a great mom. I want her to be a great lady. And a lot of that responsibility falls on me. How do I treat her? How do I handle her? So with that in mind, we have a list. <laughs> so open up. And don't go jumping ahead. Can if you want to, but, but I'm just going to work us through this list. And if you want to talk about it or raise a question or whatever, 
But my point is not to simply have a list. <coughs> it's to say, am I doing this? Is this the way I'm treating her? Number one, talk to her. Do you talk to her? I know Pastor Cremard and Darlene do a lot of ride in the car, right? We do a lot of ride in the car. Well, I want to tell you, I could ride for two hours and never say a word. <laughs> I could. I'm just, whatever, you know. And then my sweet honey will say, are, are you mad at me? No, why? <laughs> well, you haven't said anything for two hours. <laughs> I want to say it. You haven't either. But, but I know she wants to, <laughs> you know. And I would suggest to you that in, in my life I have learned this, that ladies talk their way through problems. Men think their way through problems. Now, I don't think that's unique to me. I think that's the way we operate. And so an issue comes up. Well, my wife could give you five answers in, in, uh, you know, in a half a minute. Well, we could do this. Why don't we do that? Have you thought about this? Maybe we should try this. I want to think about it, right? So when I'm driving in the car, she wonders what I'm doing. I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking about the Bible. I'm thinking about the kids. I'm thinking about the ministry. I'm thinking, I'm just, you know, I'm just going along thinking. But these gals like to talk, and they like to be talked to. And so I try to remember that. And sometimes I come up with the stupidest things to talk about, but I think i got to find something to talk about, it. you know, so whatever. Talk to her. Ladies are talkers. Now, every once in a while, every once in a while, it might be you. Every once in a while, I'll have a man come and say, well, you know, my wife and I are just the opposite. You know, she's the thinker and I'm the talker. I'm not sure what to say about that. But anyway, that's sometimes that's the way it is. But I would challenge you, talk to her. Talk to her. Open up conversation. Ask her how she's doing, how her day went. What, talk to her. Number two, we make it into this tomorrow. Seek to understand her needs, her problems, her burdens, and her fears. No need to tell you men and women are different. We are not the same. They operate on one level. We operate on a totally different level. And they have needs and problems and burdens and fears that you and I might not even think about. But one of the challenges that comes out of 1 Peter 3, and again, I'm not sure of our timing tomorrow, but we may get there. But Peter tells the husband, dwell with her according to knowledge, understanding. You need to understand your wife. That's not an easy thing. <laughs> they do change. I've always noted, though, this. God never tells the woman to dwell with the man according to knowledge. And I hate to say it, but they have us figured out. You know, I don't have her figured out. But unfortunately, she has me figured out. You know, she knows. She knows what's going on. And it's going to be very frustrating. <laughs> but it's not easy for us to figure them out. Tell a story sometimes, uh, you know, like trying to understand what is important to them and, and so on. I love to think about it. But, uh, and this may seem to fit or not fit, but it fits for me. One day we we left the house, and, and women are what I call hinters. They, they often won't tell you exactly what they want or what they think, but they, whatever, you know. So we left the house. We were going to meetings, and we were driving quite a way, and she had this little bag of M&Ms at home. And we get in the car and we're driving about 15 minutes. And she said, I forgot those M&Ms. I wanted to bring them and then we could <laughs> nibble on them while we travel, you know. So I go, boing. She wants M&Ms. That's the hint. I got it. So we're driving along and all of a sudden I saw this little shopping center. Got off the road, pulled over, pulled up to the store. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'll be right back. So we got out, went in, came back with some M&Ms, right? So I got in the car. I said, look. She said, What'd you get them for? I said, well, I, you said we, you forgot the M&Ms, and I thought, you know, you were kind of like, you'd like to have M&Ms. So I, I don't want those M&Ms. You don't? No, I don't want those M&Ms. 
Okay, I'm going to eat them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Women are hinters. They just kind of throw it up. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. I've been trying for almost 59 years to pick up the hint. Sometimes I'll say, is that a hint? You trying to tell me something? <laughs> Seek. <laughs> Make the effort <laughs> to understand her. Her needs, her problems, her burdens, her fears. Sometimes they fear things that you and I don't fear. But to get that underlying concern, you know, what's going to happen? I need to know that. If I'm going to minister to her, I need to understand her. Number three, ask, ask for her opinion. You might say, I don't have to ask for her opinion. <laughs> ask for her opinion and place real value on her point of view. Again, we think differently. Men and women don't think the same way. And you and I need to realize, okay, I'm the leader, and I could just push ahead and do what I say we're going to do, but I need to ask her for her opinion. You know why? Because God gave her to me as a helper. And God gave it because he said it wasn't good for the man to be alone, so he created a helper. Well, the wise man will receive the help. That's why God gave her to you. She does have a different point of view. She's in one place. She sees things totally differently than I see things. And I might think, and I'm pretty sure, by the way, that I always see them right. Don't you? Sure. <laughs> I can't eat it. There was one time I thought it was wrong. There wasn't. That was the only time I can. <laughs> but she sees things differently. And I need to take that into consideration. And so I need to ask for her opinion. Honey, what do you think? How do you feel? What would be good? Open up. It means a lot. That means a lot to her. And then place real value on her point of view because whatever decision you make, she has to live with it too. Put her first over all other persons. She's first. And don't be afraid to make her first. There are times when, with our traveling, she's worn out. And I say to her, and it's rare, but I say to her, you're not going tonight. What, what, why not? Because you are tired and you're not going. What will people say? I said, when they ask me, I'm going to tell them, I told her to stay home. I told her. It's not like she's, she didn't want to come. I told her to stay home. That's important. She needs that kind of care and protection. And so I'm going to put her first, and I want to say it kindly, but I don't care what anybody else thinks. Right? And you shouldn't either. Say, no, I'm pouring my life into this lady. This is what matters to me. My care of her, my love for her. And so what anybody else thinks, she didn't even come. Bless your heart, I don't care. Because she's my responsibility. Number five, live and act worthy of her trust. You know, if your wife ever comes to the place where she feels like she can't trust you, you're in deep trouble, deep trouble. And so we go out of our way to make sure she knows where we are, what we're doing, what time we left, what time we're coming home, if something happened, who we talked to. Computer, darling, you can look at that thing anytime you want. Don't hesitate to answer the phone. Don't hesitate to look at the email. Don't hesitate, whatever, because there's absolutely nothing that you can't see or know about. Now, we know in a pastoral sense, sometimes there's some confidences that might be given to us by a man that we cannot share, those kinds of things. But overall in life, God made us one. We need to live like one. And she needs to feel that she can trust me. She doesn't have to doubt at all what we're doing, where we're going, whatever. Be sensitive. I've already alluded to this. Be sensitive to her physical and emotional limitations. And again, men and women are different. 
And so, some men just shoot and go and go and go and go, and, and they can't. They can't handle the same schedule. I need to be sensitive to that. I need to be aware of that and not put her down because of it. Verse, uh, number seven, not verse seven, number seven. <laughs> Accept her. Do not compare her negatively to any other woman. I can't tell you how important that is. I can't tell you how important that is. Never the idea, you know, why can't you be like, oh, honey, her hair is nice. You want to get your hair like, you want? absolutely never compare her negatively. And certainly not to your mother. That could cost you everything. <laughs> but men do that. You know what my mom used to do? Honey, I don't care what your mom used to do. She probably wouldn't say that, but that's how she feels. And you and I need to feel that way, too. Even if your mom was the greatest cook, the greatest housekeeper, the greatest whatever it is. Never, ever compare your wife negatively to another woman. Pray for her and with her. Do you pray for her? Think about it. Do you pray for her? And then one that is even tougher, I find many times, do you pray with her? I'm amazed at how many men don't pray with their wife. And if you don't, you need to. And there can hardly be a more precious time when the two of you pray together. And I'll often say to her, most of the time, I'll say, honey, you want to pray first? She said, no, I just want you to pray. And that's fine. But that is special. That's a spiritual fellowship before God and there's little that is more important than that now that's a tough one because I find sometimes men they feel embarrassed I, I don't know what's what the struggle is but if that's one that you don't do I'm going to encourage you to do that Steve maybe start with the meals if you don't do it right put your hand out touch hers and let's pray with the meals yeah amen amen yep and it's a good thing to just hold that hand, isn't it? You know, that's very, very special. Yep. So do that. And again, I want you to just think about that. That can be a tough one to get started if you've never done it. And she might fall over if you suggest it. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, so. but you'll notice sometimes the, the touching of the hand, sometimes she only just bumps up to your hand. No, something's not, something's just not right. <laughs> yeah. did bump it. Okay. I'll keep that one in mind. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I'll tell you, very, 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 very special and very, very important. And she certainly shouldn't have to suggest it, should she? She should not. That should come from us. Number nine, forgive her when she offends you. And seek forgiveness when you offend her. We're going to talk about that tomorrow in Sunday school. Can't tell you how important it is. Because the longer things go unresolved, the deeper the offense and the deeper the hurt. And you might be here today and you know that there have been some offenses either toward you from her or from you t toward her and you know it hasn't been resolved. I want to tell you something, you got to get it resolved. <clears throat> Genuinely compliment her for what she is and what she does. Look for the opportunities to compliment her. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm sure you're grateful for yours. She needs to know it. Honey, I appreciate you so much. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate. You, you make the list. But they need to hear that. They need to hear those words. And for what she does, I marvel at what my wife does. I really do. I, you know, I'm, there's so many things I just take, take for granted. And I've, I've illustrated um, one of my daughters was having a baby, and, and so my wife wanted to go and, and uh, be with her. You know, it was hundreds of miles away. I said, okay, good. Well, things happened that she was actually gone for almost 30 days. 
which was not a problem until one day I walked into the bureau and opened the drawer and there was no undies there, and no socks. I said, hmm, never thought about that. <laughs> you know? But whew, that was an interesting time period because if I was going to eat, I was going to fix it. And if I was going to have clean clothes, I was going to have to wash it. The, the dog, the cat, oh man, I gave the cat away during those 30 days. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it was uh, interesting. I didn't like the cat anyway, but uh, these, these people came for counseling and, and they were sitting on the sofa and, and there was a cat and the guy picked the cat up there a pet and the cat. I said, do you like the cat? Oh yeah, I, I love the cat. Finally, you know, is he pet? And I said, would you like to have the cat? Oh, no, we're going to take your cat. Yes, you could. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I said, I got a cat box, cat litter, cat food. I'll give it all to you. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Tell you. Now, the cat had been left by my daughter. You have one of those, you know, like my daughter had a cat. She gets married. The cat stays. She leaves. Yeah, it was one of those cats. So as the people were leaving, I, you know, I took the, the cat up to the car and opened the door. The lady got in. And I put the cat in close the door all of a sudden the cat was running around inside the car I said it'll be okay <laughs> they never came back never came back for more counseling I assume I handled all the problems <laughs> how did we get there I don't know how I got to that story and he, oh what she does see I never realized she she's the one who fed the cat right she's the one that did the litter she's the one Man, do they do a lot that sometimes we're not even aware of. You know, I take pills. There they are. You know, breakfast this morning. Here's your pills. But I want to tell you something. If she wanted to give me the wrong pill, I'd be dead because I don't even know what those pills are. I really don't. You know, she just puts them out there. I take them. Well, that takes time. She, you know, she gets the pills out. She puts them in the thing. She, I tell her, honey, you're incredible. I'm, and she is. You know, the, the cleaning, the, I'm, everything. It's easy to take them for granted. Easy to take them for granted. Don't. Be responsible financially. It's one of the toughest days I think our country's ever been in financially. It's, it's terrible. But the man has to take responsibility. Now listen, it doesn't mean because I run into this once in a while, it doesn't mean that your wife can't write the checks. It's okay. You know, if she's the one who sits down and writes the checks and pays the bill, that's okay. That's fine. I do it in our home, but I know other homes where the lady, and that's great, but she's not responsible. I am, right? I'm responsible. I'm responsible to know where the money is. I'm responsible to know that things are being properly cared for. I'm responsible especially when it comes to the finances. And so if you're not responsible, take that responsibility and handle it. Why? Because pressure comes with financial things. And she shouldn't have to bear the pressure. We bear the pressure. She can write those checks. We bear the pressure. I also, I link that to number five. I do an arrow between five and 11. Amen. That's good. Yep. Yeah, worthy of trust. We better do it right. Yeah. How many people have you counseled where the wife does not trust the husband? Yeah. Because he just messes up the finances so badly. Yeah. And some of it's out of selfishness, some of it's out of laziness, some of it's out of whatever. But yeah, exactly right. And that's a tough one, boy. Once the lady loses trust, hard to rebuild it. Number 12, tell her you love her many times a day. Hope you tell her. I tell Trisha all the time, get up in the morning, hey, I love you. You know, on we go. I love you. Walking out the door, I love you. Walk back in, hey, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you don't tell them, they wonder, do you love me? Of course I love you. What's wrong with you, lady? Many times a day. I love you, I love you, I love you. We'll talk about the kids this afternoon. I probably will bring it up there, same thing. Hey, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Tell her many times a day. Number 14, I think is important. 
make some things important to you just because they are important to her. There's a lot of things that are important to my wife that in normal sense, they're not important to me. You know, she's a card sender. She wants to send cards to everybody. Well, I don't care. I did have one victory. I said, look, from now on, you get them at the dollar store. I'm tired of the price of Hallmark cards, right? So then she comes home. I, I got 10 cards for $12. Good girl. But I don't care about cards, right? Maybe you do. I don't. But you know what? They become important to me. Did you get the card? Why? Because it's important to her. And there's a lot of things like that in life where, you know what, if it means something to her, then I'm going to make it mean something to me. Fifteen. We've already alluded to this. Express appreciation to her for all she does and be specific. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You cannot go wrong expressing your thank yous and appreciation to her. 16, remember ladies like notes, cards, jewelry, flowers, candy. Surprise her. Now make sure you find out what she does like and what she really doesn't care about. Now, like my wife doesn't care about flowers, but she loves jewelry. She loves jewelry. And so if I bought her flowers, that would be foolish. If I buy her jewelry, that means something to her. And again, cards... Cards, again, cards don't mean anything to me, like, uh, you know, Valentine's Day. If she gives me a Valentine's Day card, which she does, and I give her one, but when she gives it to me, I want to look on the back and see what she did pay for it. You know? <laughs> okay. You know? There's an easy way around that. My wife and I came up with uh, Don't tell me you go to the store and read the card together. Nope. Oh, good. Okay, right. go ahead. What? Oh. Right. We do that. <laughs> <laughs> go into the hours. store. Pick out a nice card, take a picture of it with my phone. Okay. Take a picture of the inside, send them both to her. <laughs> Put the card back, and she got the card. See? <laughs> when you are cheap like <laughs> us, we, we find a way. She does the same thing to you. I love it. Yeah, that's what I've heard of people that go to the store, pick out a card, read it to each other, put the card back, and leave. No, you read them all. You read them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gracious. Well, find out what your lady likes <laughs> and uh, and do it for her or get it for her, whatever. I found out we can't do this now because she's not working. But for the 27 years that she did work, for no reason at all, I would send her flowers at work. And then she would get all of this, like, why, why is he doing this for you? Watch it. And she would be able then to communicate because we love each other. Just because he, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's great. That's great for her. Great for her. It's great for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. I love it. 17. Be the spiritual leader in your home. Are you? I hope you are. That means you're the one who initiates the prayer time. You're the one who initiates sharing scripture together. You're the one who initiates. You're the one who says, we're going to church. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. That's what we do. Now, I often illustrate this. If a wife sitting around the table with everybody made this statement. From now on, we're going to go to the, all the services. The average man might say, look, honey, you want to do that? Go ahead. You want to take the kids? But don't try to tell me that I'm going to all the services. But if a man sits at that table and says, from now on, we are going when the doors are open, the family will rally to it, and your wife will love you for it. But we're the problem. We're the problem. Now, I got some, you know... Guys, when I talk about these things, you get men who, I don't think you have to go to every service. I say, well, I do. I do. Not because I'm a pastor. 
when I got saved, I had a father-in-law who went to every service. Boy, he taught me the value of it. You know, we put that into practice, and we want to live that way. Why? Because that's what should be first. Well, what about Wednesday night? I don't know. You don't find Wednesday night prayer meetings in the Bible, but I know this somewhere along the line. There was some preacher who said, you know what? If the church is going to be healthy and strong, we need to get together in the middle of the week and pray. And I want to tell you this, as I've said to our own church family, if people aren't coming together to pray now, when are we ever going to? Because we're in deep, deep trouble. The church should be gathering for prayer. You know who makes that happen? Us. Men. Say, so you know what? We need to be there and pray. The spiritual leader. We can't be the leader just when it's convenient, when we want to force something. No. We need to be the leader all the time, and spiritual leader is absolutely critical. 18. We may not get through the list. I don't know. We'll see. 18. <laughs> don't dump on her the things that you don't want to handle. Men are good for that. That's, that's good. Hey, I've got this problem. You, would you call the so-and-so, you know? Call the bank, honey, and take care of this. Uh, call the heater guy because this thing needs to be checked. Call the... No, you call. Why should she have to call? Why should she have to bear that emotional pressure? And we dump things on her that, that are not convenient for us. You take care of it. It'll mean a lot to her. It'll take the pressure off of her. When it comes to whew, problems with family members, her parents, your parents. I remember some men used to say, I told her, I'll take care of my parents. You take care of your parents. And I said, well, you know what? You are the leader of the family. You deal with your parents. You deal with her parents. Because you are the leader. Handle the problem. Don't dump it on her. You need to talk to your mother. You need to talk to your father. No, you and I need to rise up and be men of God and handle the problems. But it's easy to throw things over on our wives that we don't feel like dealing with. Take the pressure. Don't dump it on her. 19. Be patient with her. Comfort her in hard times. Ladies need comfort. They need somebody to come and say, you know, honey, it'll be all right. I love you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to trust the Lord. They need to hear that. That has to come from us. Help her with housework once in a while. The vacuum can be hard on her back. Do you help with the housework? I found the greatest way this, this past Christmas, greatest way. I bought her a robotic vacuum cleaner. <laughs> we have friends in Florida who have one and whatever. And at home, this is funny, but I've always done the vacuuming, you know. But I told her, I said, honey, I'm going to buy you something very special for Christmas. We call her Mildred. <laughs> and do you have, any of you have one? Yeah. They're great, you know, 10 o'clock. My, my wife does it three days a week, ten, when, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I said, honey, we never vacuum three days a week before in our life. She said, that's the way I like it. So 10 o'clock, all of a sudden you hear boop, boop, and out she comes. <laughs> She's all over the house. Our basement is finished, so our two daughters bought us Bentley for downstairs. So Bentley operates downstairs, Mildred operates upstairs, they vacuum the house. Now, if you don't have a Mildred or a Bentley, you need to help <laughs> with vacuuming and other things. Never be ashamed of doing some housework, right, as a man caring for his wife. 21, take care of the kids so she can have some personal time. You know, there's nothing better anyway than personal time with the kids. That, that's great. I hope you do that. If you have younger children still, or hope they did do it, and just let her have that time and go and be with whatever. Larry. I'll say just one thing, just on that. We have one of those robotic things. 
We wanted a couple of weeks. I'm burned it. My wife's upstairs, I'm downstairs. We the living room in the kitchen. I'm like, why is this thing picking anything up? So she hears me say that to myself. She yells down, you gotta get up to get every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> now I don't know my ours being new. I don't know if it's different than yours, but Mildred empties herself, right? Usually three times during the the thing. She goes back to her dock, and you hear <laughs> she's empty. Now eventually, you have to empty the dock, but she goes back there. I mean, this girl's good. <laughs> she, she's something. Yeah, and she has been paid for, so she doesn't get paid every week. She's, so. Anyway, uh, where are we? 22, be as courteous as you were when you were trying to win her in the dating years. What did you do to win her? Did you hold the door for her? Sometimes I talk about that later. He never did. He never did hold the door for me. I said, then why did you marry him? <laughs> However, there are things you think about what you did to win her, and you need to win her every day. The way you talk to her, holding that door, whatever it might be, as courteous as you can be every single day. <coughs> win her, win her, win her, win her. When my uh, daughter was dating uh, her now, her husband now, um, I always told them, you need to hold the door open for her. You need to hold the door. So now that I'm dating and I have a fiance, we were getting into the car the one day, and there he stood at his car <laughs> watching. And I went around, opened the door for her. He says, You're lucky you did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. From him and from her. <laughs> I taught my daughter to wait for her door to be open. Good. I like it. <laughs> and one time, Took the groceries in the house. I came back up. She's still sitting in the car waiting for me. To <laughs> <laughs> I did. I apologized. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, well, I guess there's a lot of things that we can do. We do a lot to win a girl. We do a lot. You know, we want to show her that we are the best. You know, if she gets us, she's fortunate. And then we get married and we can drop away. Don't let it. Don't let it drop away. All right, be respectful toward her family. Don't demean them. That can be tough, right? That can be tough. When you get married, you marry another family, whether you like it or not. You know, you don't maybe realize it, but boy, you do. So how you talk about her family is very, very important. I want to say it kindly, but she can talk about her family. You know, if she wants to say, my mother's crazy, don't agree. Just whatever you, whatever you think, hon. <laughs> be careful. Guard your words and actions. Men can come across in a very intimidating way. You be careful how you talk to her. Never threaten, never raise your voice at her, never do anything because again, you may not think of it as intimidating, but a lady can receive it that way. Be very, very careful about those kinds of things. Number 25, shouldn't even have to be on the list, but I'm putting it on here anyway, never. Never hurt her physically. Doesn't matter what she does. She might punch you in the head. <laughs> you probably deserved it if she did. <laughs> Never hurt her physically. She needs to rest in that. I know he will never do anything to hurt me. So important. Share with her your thoughts, your hopes, your plans. Share with her first. How many times I've heard this one? You probably have too. You're in a group setting and a man is talking to somebody else and sitting there and he starts to tell something and then he says to his wife, I haven't even talked to you about this yet. And, he, and he's introducing some new idea. Don't do that. Don't do that. Share everything with her. Share with her your thoughts and your plans and your dreams or whatever it might be. And then when you share it with somebody else, you know, she's a part of it. But this idea, I haven't even told you yet. Tell her first. Tell her first. Call, text when you are away, especially if you're going to be late. I call my wife all the time. You know, if 
I'm going to the store, I just give her a call. Hey, I'm here. You know, is there anything else I need to add to the list or whatever it might be? I just want her to know, hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Make sure she knows. And especially if we're going to be late, inform her, let her know. That communication is very, very important. 28, do not insult or degrade or put her down. And I say especially in front of others, but you shouldn't do it at all. But don't humiliate your wife. Be very, very careful how you talk to her, especially in front of other people. 29, look behind her words for what might really be her struggles. Sometimes, you know, she'll talk about things, but there's more. And only if she knows we really care will she maybe open up and share the more. So words are good, but just listen. Listen. I, uh, I don't know how often the guy missed this situation with his wife, but it was a young couple that we knew growing up. They weren't in our church, but we knew the families. And uh, after he'd been married for a number of years, he called me one day. And he said, Pastor Griffith, I really need help. So uh, I said, well, tell me what happened. He said, well, the other day, he said, I had a guy come in to the area for work, and he didn't have a motel, so I invited him to come to our house, and, and he could spend the night. He said, so I brought him to our house. He said, and I walked in, and as I walked in the door, I said, just go down the hallway, and, and uh, the first room to the right is our guest room. So I don't know what he was doing, but he said, all of a sudden, the guy came out, and he said, uh, is this where you, you want me? And he said, yeah. He said, well, there's no furniture in here. He said, what do you mean, no furniture? Well, he started to look around, and a whole lot was missing. You know why? That day, his wife left him. She brought people in, packed things up, took off. He didn't have a clue that there was anything wrong in their relationship. When I later talked to her, there was a lot wrong, but he never paid any attention. He didn't listen, not just here, here. He didn't get what was going on, how deeply she was hurt, and so on. You and I need to listen in every way to understand and, and not miss the struggle that she might be, be having. That was just incredible to me, really incredible to him. Put her needs first during intimate times, and of course at all times. I don't want to say it, and you know it's very easy for a man to get satisfaction in intimacy. Often not so easy for a lady, and men can be very, very selfish. Don't be. Don't be. Put her needs first. Learn to be a caregiver when she's sick. If you've never been that good caregiver, you got to be it. you got to be there, and you got to be fixing things, taking care of her, whatever it might be that she needs. We have to learn. Respect her opinions. We've alluded to that earlier. Uh, stay ahead of her in spiritual knowledge. Many, many women know far more about the Bible than men do. My wife is a Bible reader. She's one of these read through the Bible every year. You know, she's been doing it for years and years. And, and sometimes she'll just ask me, you know what I was reading about? I'm like, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I better think about that. What's she talking about? She knows a lot of Bible experiences and what, so on, you know. And women study their Bible many times more than men do. And you have to be ahead of your wife when it comes to spiritual things. Bible knowledge and spiritual truth. You want her to come to you and you want your children to come to you and ask you the questions. Not, well, honey, you have to ask the pastor because I don't know. No, you. You and I have to know. Stay ahead of her. 34, hold her hand in private and public. Hold her hand. That's special. You probably held her hand when you were dating her. If you're not holding her hand now, what happened? Did she one day, don't hold my hand anymore? Probably not. Maybe. <laughs> Tender touches, shoulder rubs, caressing. Boy, that's important. You know, you walk by her sometimes just to, just to touch. Hey, girl, I love you. You know, just... Tender touches, tender times. Plan special times to be with her alone. I'm moving quickly because our time is about going there. 
plan special times to be with her alone. Get somebody to watch the kids if you got kids at home. But honey, it's just going to be you and me. We're going to go, whether it be for dinner or away for a couple days or whatever it might be. Uh, if you walk into a room of people, go to her first. Just think about that one. You know, you walk in and here's 15 people. She's way over there and here's all these people. You don't want to be unkind, but you head for her. You just walk by. Somebody might try to get them out right with you. You head right for her. You greet her, you hug her, you kiss her, whatever it is. Then you turn and talk to everybody else. But you just put on that display. That lady's first in my life. I'm going to go to see to her. Uh, do not let your parents come between you and her. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Doesn't mean you don't like your parents anymore. But it does mean this. You don't have the same obligations to them anymore. Honor them, but you're not obligated to them. You're obligated to her. And if they ever get in the way, you have to stand by her. That can be a challenge. But that's the way it is. More we could say about that. Defend her if she comes under attack of any kind. Nobody's going to attack her. You're going to defend her. Very quickly, moving, moving on. Number 40, fully discuss matters before making life-changing decisions. Aim for peace together. It's always been Trisha's and my goal. We want peace together about a big decision, not where I say, this is what we're doing, honey. No, we don't want that. We want peace where we feel God is, is leading us together. Treat her gender, uh, gently and tenderly at all times. Be willing to learn from her. There are things you and I can learn from her if we'll listen. Lead her and your children into faithful worship at church. We talked about that a little bit. Seek to be prepared to answer spiritual questions your family may have. We alluded to that. Never give her a reason to doubt your loyalty to her. She's first. Let it be known to her and to everybody else. Tell others how wonderful she is. Magnify her best points. It's easy to do. I love to do it. You should do it. You know, just let other people know. I'll tell you something. This lady's amazing. I love her. She's wonderful. And so on. Deal with habits or sins in your life that are most hurtful and annoying to her. Sometimes we will accept sin and laziness or whatever it might be in our life. And it's a struggle for her. And you and I need to identify those things and say, I'm going to deal with them. 48, never respond to her or the children in anger. Never. You don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to yell. You don't have to do that. Be very careful. Give her liberty to spend money on things that she might need or want. That can be tough if you're not doing so well financially, but if that's possible, you want to do it. Honey, this is just, just go do whatever you want. Go buy whatever you want. I don't care. Just money in her hands. And then sacrifice yourself for her, but, but don't let her become the leader. And there's a balance, and we'll touch on that tomorrow. There's a, a balance between the husband sacrificing himself without sacrificing his role of leader. And we've got to find that, that balance. So our time is going. Any questions, any comments, any, <coughs> any anything? Be glad to hear from you. But you know what the bottom line is? I want to be a great husband. And I hope you do too. That should be one of the highest goals that you and I can have. I want her to trust me and know that she's first in my life. That's one thing I'd like to add. That thought that came to mind is if one of the kids, my wife, comes to you with a spiritual question and you don't know, find out. Amen. Go send them to the pastor. You go to the pastor. Amen. Find out, bring the answer. Exactly right. Absolutely. That's so important. Say, I don't know, but I'll be back. I'm going to find out. And then find out. And then come back and answer the question. Yeah, that's great. Really important. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together this morning. And Father, I pray for us. Again, every man here is in a different situation from the other. But where we are in life is a place where we need your guidance and your blessing. Uh, some of us have more difficult situations to deal with for a variety of reasons. But I pray that we might be, each of us, in your sight and in the sight of others, a man of God. 
Father, we want to be that. Help us. Well, thank you. Uh, please bless us as we move on toward our lunchtime and fellowship and then the afternoon sessions. We'd be very grateful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, man.